Welcome back to Obsession Engineering and Adam's little RVF 400 project. Now it's nearly Adam's birthday and he's been treating himself to many, many wonderful little things including caliper seals, carburetor seals and just a box full of nice things. So today we're going to reassemble some stuff and see if we can make some progress on his little Honda. While Adam's having his first brew of the day, I'm going to show him what he's going to be doing next. These are the float bowl seals and the new uh, float valves that are going to go into assembling his carbs. So these bits hopefully will be sufficient to stop it leaking. All right, so starting with the emulsion tubes. They go in the big hole. They do go in the big hole. So everything should screw together quite easily by hand but then you will need a tool to just give them a little bit of a nip up. So that's it, just a bit of a nip. They don't need to be mega mega tight. Uh, they're in the wrong holes, Adam. What? Oh, only kidding. <laughs> you tinker. Oh, in the top. Pilot jets. So according to the manual, while Adam's doing pilot oh, screws, no, 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 not those screws. Right, Adam's getting a little confused there because Adam thinks that you have to turn the pilot fuel screws no, one and five eighth turns out, according to the book. So he was going to turn these out. These don't need to come out because they're just a hole. What he's thinking of is the pilot air screws, not the pilot fuel screws. So pilot air screws, you wind them all the way in and then according to the book, you come out one and five eighth turns. If Adam will show you show them to the camera, we have a little screw, a uh, little spring, and a uh, pilot air screw. So the spring goes over the pilot air screw, and then it goes in the hole. And the spring is there purely to stop, like the vibration rattling the uh, pilot air screw out, because that would be disappointing if it changed its carburetion every time it vibrated a little bit. So we nearly forgot this. There's a tiny little washer, a little brass washer, and that just stops the spring wearing the carb body. So we have this arrangement, we have the uh, pilot air screw, the spring and the washer. So one turn, half one and five eighths, so half and a little bit. So half and about that much. So that's the jets and needles and bits back in the bottom of the carbs so what we need to do now is fit the float valves and the floats. Adam has very carefully unwrapped his new float valves, the little dangly bit here and he's attached it to his uh, bigger dangly bits here so the big bits are the floats because obviously they float on the level of fuel and when they do they float up and they push this bit down the float valve and that stops any more fuel coming into the carburetor so this will go down into the little hole down there and drop down there and then we have a little pin that just goes in the end of here to hold everything in the right place. Right, so Adam has reassembled, he has all the floats in the bike, so the next thing to do is check the float heights. So the way we do this is, if we're say working on this one is, you can see there it's dangling and if we tilt it back so it just, just bottoms the float valve, but isn't pushing down on it too hard. So there, and then we're going to get a uh, steel rule, and we're going to measure up from the car body to the float, and it should be 12.5 mil on these, apparently. I'd say that was 15.5 mil. So what we need to do now is just tweak the tab of the float a little bit, so that the this section sits slightly differently angled to the actual float valve and then hopefully we'll get the right reading. So, oh, near enough cock on, we're within half a millimetre on that one. So that was actually fairly straightforward and now Adam just has to copy this for the other three. Thanks. Are you having fun with carbs? No. Are they just a bit they are fiddly just, and tedious? Yes. They take lots of time. There's lots of little bits. It's like we've, we've put lots of stuff back into it already, and we still have many bits to go back in it. 
That's one of them. And then we've got this one. And, and then we've got the big tray. And then we've got there. the big tray. And then we've got the new seals. So yeah, it's it's all a bit of a faff. I suppose that's 90s bikes for you. Welcome to right. Carburetors. Welcome to carbs, yeah. Fuel injection apparently is the way forwards. I, I've why, heard rumours of this. Hence why we don't have carbs on bikes anymore. It's all fuel injected. Woohoo! You plug and play, really, isn't it? Definitely. Oh well, at it least it's interesting. It's interesting to see the engineering from the uh, the olden days. Yeah. Right. Well, in that case, while while you've uh, while you've still got some motivation left, we probably ought to go and uh, put the float <laughs> bowls on. Put a million more pieces back in. Yes, yeah. pretty much. Yeah, yeah. So the next thing to do then is float bowls. So new float seals. Uh, yeah. If I even showed them to the camera, it'd be even better, wouldn't it? So. New float seals, new float valves, so the seal goes in the recess in the bowl. Goes in just like that. Yeah, pretty much like that, but actually in the gap. And then that goes down there and bolts onto there. So I'm just going to nip and see if we can find some slightly nicer screws, because some of the ones were slightly rounded off when we took them apart. <sighs> what fun. So Adam's now enjoying himself putting his float bowls on, and there's a couple of little hints that we have for helping the job along a little bit. Because... The gasket tends to want to actually fall out the uh, groove in the float bowl. What we can do is put a little dab of grease sort of in the corners on either the gasket or ideally put it in the groove in the float bowl. A little dab of grease everywhere and that sort of holds that in place and obviously it's not going to bother the rubber. And then we've also replaced the screws because some of them were awkward to take out. So we've replaced them with some stainless cap screws with a little copper slip on them so that hopefully we won't take these apart for a few years. But if we do need to, the copper slip will actually help them come apart. So, the awkwardness of our VFs and VFRs is because these float bowls sit so close together, you sort of actually have to put both of them on at the same time, which we're going to have fun with this one because Adam's now going to have to take this one back off to put that one in with it at the same time. But that is how they fit. Another awkwardness of a tightly packaged little V4. But the bottoms of the carbs are nearly done. So now that Adam's done the bottom of the carbs, he's now moved on to the top. So this is the needle. So the needle goes into the main jet or into the emulsion tube and alters how much fuel is going into the engine. That is raised up by the uh, slide riding, raising up because the diaphragm gets negative pressure in here. And that sucks that up there, basically. So the one down there is already fitted. If, an example, we, you can sort of see that would move up and down there. A negative pressure in here, caused by the Venturi in the carb, sucks that up. It all gets sort of flappy around. So that's fairly easy. Adam just needs to get this one in. Again, they have to be very well seated into here and uh, into all this area. Otherwise, nothing works properly. So a little bit fiddly and you have to be quite careful, but they shouldn't be too bad to do. Just like that. Just like that. Just like that. Zebedee said, but doing. Right, and then just as he's lowering this down, we have to make sure that the diaphragm is sitting correctly in its little groove. But if he's happy with that, yep. nip the screws up. They don't have to be especially tight because they're only sort of sealing onto an O-ring. Now that the carb tops are fitted, the next thing to do is to fit the choke mechanism. So. In effect, this is the choke plunger. We have yet another spring because we haven't got enough of those fitted already. And this is the little sort of cover that holds it in place. So that'll go like that. And that fits in here. So with that fitted, what we have is a mechanism on here with a rail that pulls that open like that. And that just lets extra fuel into here and basically sort of, you know, makes it nice and rich for easy starting. Right, so this is the choke mechanism fitted, and this end there's a little return spring that just sort of coils around the post under there. There are little nylon washers on top and collars underneath so that it slides in nylon. And in effect, if I move that, which is the sort of where the choke cable will attach to, that moves out that way. And you can see down in there, the sort of brass choke bit that we fitted earlier, that goes out in there. And if I let go of it, the return springs ping it back in. 
So that's it, that's the chokes done. The only things left to do now is to fit um, some of the fuel pipes and bits and the choke cables over here and these little rubber joints that literally just sit in the top of there. So we'll arrange all that. Then we can go and put it back on the bike. Woo! So what we now have is a considerably cleaner inside of a Honda. I mean, don't go wrong, these bits in here you can't see. But you also can't see the crack of your bum, but you still want it clean. So Adam did a lovely job making that look considerably better the other day. We now also have a set of carbs that are complete with some new seals in them. So we'll take these little covers off that we put on so we didn't end up with water down the inlets and things. So get all those off and then we're going to get a little bit of spray lube, like a bit of GT85 or whatever, into here because... When you come to actually try and push the carbs on, because normally, obviously, you're pushing four in or two in or whatever at the same angle, but these ones are going in at different angles, so they are a little bit awkward to get them to pop into all the rubbers at the same time. So a little bit of lube will always help slip it in. Isn't that right, Adam? <laughs> Certainly is. So, yeah, a little bit of lube, a little bit of force, because that sometimes helps as well. We'll get the carbs in, and hopefully then we can rig some fuel up to it, and it won't leak which would be a novelty. The last job before we put the carbs on is there's some little screws down here and that's where we need to plug the balancer in. So we need to take the blanking screws out of these and fit the adapters for the carb balancer because, you know, otherwise we won't be able to balance them. That may be a little bit awkward because access isn't brilliant. So it is definitely going to be easier before we put the carbs on though. Before we attempt to actually get the carbs into the hole, we need the throttle cables connecting. So, if I pull the throttle open, you'll see one of the cables get shorter. So, this one is the opening cable, because if I pull the throttle open, that pulls shorter. And if Adam works out, that goes that way. So the opening one wants to go at the bottom. There's not a lot of room, which is the standard thing when you're working on a 400 Honda. You will say to yourself a lot, there's not much room undoing cable like the uh, the closing cable just has a nut and this bit so it can only sort of go in one place and then all the adjustment for your slack is in the opening cable so if I have a little play at this end there's a lot of slack in this throttle a lot of free play there so if Adam does it so that this nuts all the way at the end there's still a bit of slack in there what we got at this end right that's much much better we have a little bit of slack there, but we do have adjusters under here as well, so we can take some more slack out of it later if we need to. So that's happy days. We just need to nip all of those up before we push the carbs into place. Yeah. Tell you what, there's going to be a lot of editing in this video, isn't there? Yeah. In the video, this probably looks like, you know, rebuilding carbs takes about 20 minutes. How long did it actually take, Ads? Uh, about 45. <laughs> 45 hours, was hours. that? <laughs> Okay, so that cable's out of the way now. That one back there is sort of in, in, but kind of in place. That one's sort of in place. Right, so now That's you have the choice place. of, do you push on the front ones first and try and get them to pop in, and then the rear ones? I was going to try and do it. Yeah. All at the same time. Th there may, at this point, be an advantage to being a slightly... Uh, Portly a fellow. Exactly. Portly. Portly? portly. Who's yes. this portly character? I don't know. I don't know, but I bet he's fat. Yes. <laughs> They're not going in, are they? No. No. <laughs> Have you got it in yet, Adam? Is it in yet? Do I sound like one of your girlfriends now? <laughs> Is it in yet? The other side just popped out. <laughs> Heave! Oh, I think that one went in. Oh, do you think? I can't, I can't see because there's so much... Stuff in the way. Stuff, mate. Yeah, stuff. That's the word. No, it was definitely a word beginning with S that you were about yeah. to say, wasn't it? <laughs> right. right. Uh, we need to get a torch and have a look and see if we can see right down into here to see if the carbs have actually penetrated into their <coughs> rubbery holes. What do you reckon, Adam? I think that's in, mate. Do you? Set me a ganders. 
I mean, unfortunately, it's awkward to see with my eyes, let alone trying to get a camera to see in there. Now, if I push that out of the way a little bit... No, you still can't see. So, so how's the gynaecology uh, studies going, Adam? Amazing. Was fitting your carbs really good fun? Amazing. It took no time at all. Ish. Excellent. Not that happen- now. But they, they are, they are. Right, we have rigged fuel up, uh, which is at a bit of an angle because the hose is a tiny bit short. I've actually turned the fuel tap on. Yes, fuel helps. There is not fuel pouring out of the bike onto the bench, which is a bonus. So the next thing to do is see if it will start and see how bad the balance is. Contact. Ignition key on? Yes. Excellent. (laughs) (laughs) Shall we have a go at that then? Joke. Well, it's going to be awkward, that, isn't it? Because it's not attached. Do you want me to press the button here? Yeah. Ready? Joke on. Well, it sounds better before. That's now on four cylinders as well. And it actually sounds pretty good. Let's... We should really wait for it to warm up before we do the balance. And that's quite wrong. Um, Yeah, they should all be fairly even and they're not. (laughs) But we'll let it warm up a little bit. And then we'll see what it looks like. Right, so we're getting some warmth in it now and it's ticking over okay. But number four is completely different to the others, if I rev that a little bit. You can see number one and number three, the columns are fairly similar high, but two and four are completely different. So what we're going to do in a minute is turn the bike off, because I think it may be easier to adjust without it running, and I shall explain that very shortly. Right, the issue we have here is... The adjuster screws are down here. But handily, the screws come up from underneath. So getting to them would involve a long, bendy screwdriver or fingers about four foot long. And I don't have fingers four foot long. So my theory is, open the throttle, adjust these a little bit, where they are right here where I can get to them, and then shut them again. Yeah, then shut the throttles again and uh, see if I've adjusted them the right way. I've put the tick over back down to normal because I've had it a little bit higher for doing some of the setup. And as you can see, it's still a little bit longer with two and four closer, but not perfect by any stretch. But if you give it some rev, it's actually pretty good. So I think realistically, I might give a tiny little tweak on number two, but that is pretty good and it sounds really quite nice. What's up, Dave? Not a lot, Ads, not a lot, because everything's going swimmingly, isn't it? It is. Just got to fit these little bad boys back. Yeah, right, the um, little um, the little things for the car balance are the adapters, we've taken them out. Uh, this one here has the feed pipe for the vacuum fuel pump, or vacuum fuel tap, so I've reconnected that. I've actually put a new piece of hose on it, um, and I'm just refitting the rubbery bits on there, and then we shall um, put the airbox on, I suppose. And then I might just run it for a little while longer, because this thing's not really been run. That's actually to balance the carbs up the longest it's been run since it was built. And it sounds pretty good, but it'd be nice to put like a proper good heat cycle through it and then run the carbs out of fuel so they're not sat with fuel in it. But yeah, I think it's going fairly well, into ads. It is, mate. Almost there. Right, so this is the air funnels for the front cylinders. And you can see they've got a longer bit on them in these tabs. So you have to sort of lift the airbox a little bit, drop it into the airbox gaps, turn it, and drop it into there. The longer bit stops the air that's rushing into the carb, pushing down the air pilot holes and stuff like that. So they look complicated, but they're actually surprisingly easy to fit. So that's them down. So now we have to fit the screws that actually hold it all down to the carbs. And they've got little tab washers on them. But some of the tabs have broken on ours, so we're going to Loctite those ones in instead. Low strength, so they don't vibrate out, 
because one day we may have to take them out, but we definitely don't want them coming out while we're riding along. Right, that's the airbox base back on and these are all on and everything's nice and snug and in the right position. Uh, I've made a little bit of foam for this. This is just like a carb breather, uh, but I don't want it breathing fresh air from nowhere. So I've just made a little bit of foam so we don't have to try and get one from Honda. It doesn't do that much, but it's nice to have it. Uh, I probably ought to really connect the airbox breather up. Uh, I'll connect those up to there, put the airbox lid on, and uh, yeah, might give it another little run and uh, see if it sounds sweet with the airbox on. So that's the air filter, the airbox lid, and all the pipes and bits fitted. I've had it running, it sounds sweet as a nut still, so that's tickety-boo. So I suppose that's probably about it for the day. So that's another day done on the little RVF. Adam unfortunately has to have to rush off to a wedding reception, luckily not his own. So, what have we learned today? Well, carburetors are awkward. Carburetors formed in a V are even more awkward. Four carburetors in a V is really awkward. Uh, basically doing anything to a carburetor on a V4 Honda is awkward. But when they do run they sound really nice and today we have the advantage of there isn't fuel pouring out the bottom. So we are definitely making progress. It may not be fast progress, but this is a project bike so you can't expect anything to happen fast until it's on the road. So thank you for watching and join us again next time for a bit more Honda action. Before you rush off, there is a couple of little things for me to mention. I now have a long bendy screwdriver for doing car balancing and it turns out when you bolt the airbox bottom on, sometimes it pulls the carbs out of line and then you have to rebalance them again. Which is brilliant. Anyway, thanks for watching. Enjoy again next time for some more motorbike fun.